So for a few weeks now, renowned leaker Greymon55 on Twitter has been claiming that Mafi31, so that's AMD's top SKU for RDNA 3 launching towards the end of this year, is composed of seven dies. I made a video last year explaining how AMD has solved the multi-GPU problem and will likely be delivering a chiplet-based GPU this year. But in my videos, I showed the possible three die configurations, not seven die. Could there really be seven dies? on Navi 31, let's dive in. The great thing about YouTube, and particularly channels like Cortex, is that you learn a lot of new useful things in technology and science, but to really dive deep and understand things in detail, you need to learn by practicing, and today's sponsor Brilliant lets you do exactly that. Brilliant is an online interactive STEM learning platform that helps you gain a deeper understanding of concepts in math, science, and computer science by actively guiding you step by step with hands-on visually stimulating examples and exercises. Brilliant is also constantly expanding their range of courses, so whether you're a beginner, an expert, or anywhere in between, there's an interactive lesson for your knowledge to grow. I really like Brilliant's Computer Science Fundamentals course, which has great lessons on subjects like parallelism or Amdahl's Law. There are also courses in machine learning, quantum computing, and many others. To get started for free and try out everything Brilliant has to offer, visit brilliant.org slash cortex or click on the link in the description. The first 256 of you will also get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. So as a quick refresher, over a year ago, before there was any information on this out, I should add, I proposed a couple of configurations for AMD's upcoming RDNA 3 top SKUs. In both cases, there's a primary chiplet, which I call the mother chiplet, and a secondary chiplet. In one configuration, you have an active bridge in between the two, and in an alternative configuration, you have a passive control die, which could have a memory module in some form. This was based on early AMD patents that I found and studied. Since then, AMD has published a few more relevant patents. The first one describes a form of passive communication between chiplets using a passive crosslink. So basically, the primary chiplet is linked to the CPU via a bus, and the other secondary chiplets are connected to the primary chiplet via passive crosslinks. This passive crosslink is its own passive interposer die. So far, this points to the same configurations I shared before, particularly the one where the control die was passive and not an active bridge. The last level cache, or what AMD calls infinity cache, is coherent across all GPU chiplets, even though it's distributed between them. So the CPU only sees the primary chiplet, as I explained over a year ago, and therefore only sends a memory access request to that primary chiplet. So from the CPU's point of view, there's only one GPU to deal with. That's how AMD has solved the multi-GPU problem. So this allows AMD to create much larger capacity multi-chiplet GPUs that appear as single devices to an application. This will apply to the data center GPU, but also to the upcoming consumer GPUs. The difference is that the data center GPUs will have more chiplets, and the consumer GPUs will likely only have two GPU chiplets. As you can see in this example from this patent, all communication from the CPU must go through the passive crosslink die. These dense passive dies require a ton of energy to operate. There are other patents that I've studied, but that I won't cover here, that show how to smartly handle how how data is moved around as to reduce the power consumption. As a fun side note, the next couple of years you will see photonics appearing in devices like this, particularly from Intel, that solve the efficiency and capacitance issues in these denser copper-based interconnects. It's still a ways off, but if you'd like me to cover photonics, let me know down in the comments or on Discord. So to be clear, game developers won't have to change anything to their code to address a device like this. The system only sees one GPU. Now the next illustration gives us a hint at how this passive crosslink is configured in the package. In this sectional view, the passive crosslink die is this whole area here under the GPU chiplets. So contrary to my examples from last year, which were based on early patterns, it seems the passive die is under the GPU die. 
device and is connected to these through these phis. Phi simply means physical device region. These other non-phi regions are used for power and chiplet to circuit board signals. That's why you have these pillars going to the passive crosslink down to the circuit board. These pillars are not TSVs, they're just wiring. So far it seems we have a large passive crosslink die and then two or more GPU chiplets on top at least according to this patent. So if Grayman's leak on Twitter is correct, the remaining four chiplets would be memory chiplets, either in a 2D configuration like this, or in a 3D configuration with the memory stacked on top of the GPU chiplets, like so. So these are the two possible die configurations for RDNA 3, particularly the Navi 31 SKU. The main difference between them is the 2D packaging version would be considerably cheaper to make but I have some reservations on how far the interposer could reach, especially if more GPU chiplets are added. The latency in this case would reduce performance significantly. The second option with the memory dies stacked on top of the logic would have significantly higher performance, but also be more costly to manufacture. A third option would be a double release. So first, later this year, we would see the 2D version of this package being released, and then mid next year, AMD could launch a refresh fresh like a 7950 XT that would be 3D stacked. Honestly, if I were AMD, I would go all in in the 3D stacked option from the get-go. I think they would destroy Nvidia if they do. It's highly unlikely that Nvidia would be able to match this with a monolithic design, assuming they are on the same nodes, of course. In fact, I suspect Nvidia is rushing to introduce the chiplets GPU themselves. I think we will see the RTX 4090 this year, followed relatively shortly by an RTX 50 90 chiplet space GPU next year in order to stop AMD getting too far ahead. I will be covering Nvidia's chiplet GPUs soon also, so be sure you're subscribed for that. Now there is another recent AMD patent that approaches things from a completely different angle, where the communication between dies is actually made through interconnecting chiplets in addition to fan out traces. There's even an example there which features precisely seven chiplets, but I think that this is more likely just a patent referring to future heterogeneous designs and not the upcoming RDNA 3 GPUs. I'll link these patents in the description if you want to take a look. Now, what if AMD is not delivering an MCM design in the sense of having multiple GPU chiplets? Some people have suggested as much on Twitter, and as such I'll look at this possibility. So a possible but highly unlikely configuration for 7 dies in that case would be something like this. 6 memory dies, a passive interposer, and a a single large GPU chiplet in the center. Honestly, this would just be dumb from AMD considering this is a gaming product. I don't think AMD would have all these patents popping up for multiple GPU chiplets if they didn't plan to release it, especially considering just how many patents they have covering this topic and how many more patents there are that relate to it. Such a design makes no sense with six memory chiplets in a design where hiding latency is so important. For a device for the data center, I could see something like this making some sense. In fact, we saw it with Nvidia's data center GPUs, but those don't care about latency, not to mention they use HBM for the high bandwidth. It's meant to target completely different workloads. I mean, I could see something like Navi32 having only one GPU chiplet and four memory dies, but for Navi31, I'm convinced it will indeed feature two GPU chiplets, and if it indeed has seven chiplets in total, it will either be 2D or 3D arranged like so, or something along these lines. The dream, of course, would be the dual chiplet design with 3D stack memory, but maybe that would be giving AMD too much credit. They usually take things one step at a time. So a 2D design first and a 3D stacked later would make more sense. But we'll see. Maybe AMD really wants to top the performance charts this time around, no matter the cost. There are very few people, if any, out there researching and actually understanding patents for Intel, AMD and Nvidia upcoming products. And it takes a ton of time and work, so if you would like to continue getting videos like this, please consider supporting my channel on Patreon, as it's been harder and harder to rely on YouTube ad revenue to make a living. Support the channels that deliver unique and well-researched analysis to you before they die out. Go to patreon.com slash cortex, and by becoming a patron, you also get a exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server. Thanks for watching and until the next one.